Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's constant. I know. It's annoying. I it annoys me. When I look at myself. We'll go sit crisscross applesauce. Let's sit like this. I always feel like I look like a <laughs> like a big whale. No, you don't. Alright. Alright. Speed and we're rolling. Great. And action. And action. Hey. And hi, I need to get. I wasn't ready. I oh, started everything and right. I wasn't well, ready. Now I'm ready. You got your right. fancy sweater on. I haven't. This is an old, old navy sweater. I think it's like a retro. It is very like, retro. Like I don't know. Like I'm at the academy or something. Yeah, or you're producing a movie or a podcast. I well, then I dressed appropriately. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. It's February. It is Thank God. It is as we speak right now. It's 2222. I know. Is that a good luck or bad luck? Should we be playing the lottery? Hide, uh, hiding inside? Hiding in know. plain sight. Um <laughs> we should definitely we should definitely play the lottery. I never play. I just talk about it. I don't, I don't wanna... even know what I'm doing if I try to go in there. As people are like in the store, like, bam, bam, I'll have a this, I'll turn off. What are they called? The yeah. different. I... I don't even know. I don't even know the language. Don't even know. <laughs> I'm lost. You're like, I'm going to play the lottery. <laughs> and I don't want to encourage gambling, but you know, if you have the, if you have the money and you want to buy a ticket or two, I like the scratch offs more than anything. I, I don't even know. Uh, Powerball. That's the one I was trying Power to Powerball. That's the one with the balls flying the little thing, and then they yes. come up, and then you see if you have them. <laughs> I want you to I, describe the lottery all the time. It's where the balls, they fly I, around, and they go in the little thing, and then you see if you have them. And it's right. It's technically correct. <laughs> I am a blonde white woman. <laughs> Did you know? <laughs> and all the balls have numbers yeah. on them, and they do, you know, yeah. It's it's okay, right. You're I'm right. Gonna, I'm not saying another word about the lottery. I'm done. Just, no, we are we are done. We are done uh, shilling for the lottery. You're on your own, Pennsylvania lottery. With uh, who, what's their who's their really annoying uh, thing they have right now? Phil the groundhog. Oh, it's Groundhog Day today. It is Ground. Is it Groundhog Day today? Yes. Oh, it is. And he saw a shadow. Yeah. Six more weeks of winter. I don't. Someone was saying this whole six weeks. I'm like, there's way more weeks than six of crappy weather. I'm sorry to be a negative, Nancy, but yeah. in six weeks, the weather is not nice. March is not lovely. No, March is the one. Is no. that the one that goes it's in a like a lion and out like a lamb? It has like teasers in it, but it's still, I think, definitely. Anyway, yeah. we had our first snowstorm. First which snowstorm. It really wasn't. It was very disappointing. <laughs> Ralph was very upset I'm about it. I'm very upset about it. If you, if you tell me it's going to snow and like, oh, you better get all your provisions and stay inside, there better be like a monsoon of snow. Like, I've, I've, we've yeah. had snowstorms here where I opened my front door and it was like up to my waist. Yeah, no, that was. That's a snowstorm. Yeah. That Six was inches is not a snowstorm. No, but that's what they like put it up with the news like blizzard. That's what, saying. That's blizzard what they said. Blizzard of twenty two. That's blizzard. what they say in Philadelphia. Well, not for, for us. It for wasn't six inches. Yeah. No. And uh, I am obsessed with the weather, so I told you before. Mm -hmm. I already knew it was six inches, and they actually called it right. It's just that it was very icy because it was very very cold and blowing really bad. So yeah. that made it slightly unpleasant. So most people I know spent the day inside which i spent most of the day inside watching yeah. movies oh yeah uh what was did you anything in particular i watched a movie that was actually really interesting that my friend wanted me to watch called 23 with jim carrey oh is he like uh, obsessed with the number obsessed, yeah yeah, yeah. Oh. it's actually really good i will oh. give it a definite thumbs up and then i made this my friend watch one of my favorite movies which i've seen a thousand times goodwill hunting I've never seen it. Oh my God, Ralph. I know. This I know. Is, I'm sorry, everyone. That's upsetting to me. I know. It's, it's upsetting to me, too. It really is, to me, a fantastic movie. Okay, I'll watch it. It's on my list. We just uh, we just finished uh, Archive 81 on right. Netflix. So mm -hmm. if you... we Great. Very, like... I'm a big fan of X-Files. Very, like, yeah, X-Files-y, like podcast-y, like, fun, mystery kind of stuff. Supernatural. Awesome. Check it out. And we just started watching Euphoria mm -hmm. last night. I have never felt older in my entire life. Oh, then I don't want to watch that. I feel like I am 98 years old. 
because I'm like, this is high school? They're all in high school? Like, this is what happens in high school? I can't, I can't. I was, <laughs> I was born in the 1900s. You were like, no. No, I, I just, I'm scared. I would, I would never fit in. I've never seen it, but now you've intrigued me to at least check out an Give episode. it a shot. It was, it was good. And we only saw the, the pilot. Oh no, we saw, we watched two episodes, I think. Yeah. Um, it was good. I'm definitely going to watch more. Um, but yeah, I felt super old. I was, <laughs> the whole I was such a grandpa because the whole time I was like, you don't have a helmet while you're riding. <laughs> Put a helmet what on while you ride your bike. Isn't it past your curfew? You're, when is this party? Ten o'clock? No, sir. <laughs> you will be home by ten thirty. Go and say hi. Have a shot, and then go back home. Yeah. I'm not a total like dork. It's fine. It's, there's there's yeah. some shows that I've just aged out of, and I, I can't watch anymore. But I'm watching this really great series. But guess what? I can't even really tell you what it's called because the title is so long and it's the i'm sorry to whoever named this this show that i can't even remember the title as how long it is it's something about the woman in the window looking at the little oh, girl in the window yeah. across the street it's so long <laughs> but the show is really really good okay it's Kristen bell she's she's fabulous another Kristen. um it's really good okay. I, I was really sucked into it last night um and it's kind of left me hanging where I got to pick it back up. But the title, come on already. It was very, we thought it was a joke. It was this Kristen Bell and she's a comedic, like really good comedic actress. Yeah. And it was like the woman across the street from the woman in the window's house across yeah. the street. And we were like, come on, this is a, this is like a Judd Aptow thing, it's right? It's a terrible like a, title because no one can remember what it is right. to tell people about it. Well, if you say it's good, is the whole series? I thought it was just, just a no, movie. No, it's a series. Oh, all right. And it's, she's not, well, she has funny moments, but it's not a comedy. Okay. At all. All right. Yeah. I'll definitely give yeah, it a shot. Give it a whirl. Give it, give I'll it, give it a watch whirl. Watch one episode of that. You know, I'll it, give it a whirl. It gets better and better, and it's one of those just sucks you in. Okay. Anyway. Um, so I had the idea for today's topic because I am, I'm, I'm pretty pissed about it. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm livid about it, and... I felt like this was a good opportunity to get it out of my soul yeah. so it doesn't burn a hole through my soul. But also I think it fits in nicely to the uh, kind of um, point of our show is to like get people to talk more and have more conversations about mm -hmm. things and ask questions. So uh, <laughs> get ready to Here's lose. Here's the lead up. Get ready to lose <laughs> listeners in three, two, one. I want to talk about all the book banning that's happening right now in the United States. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. da. Newsflash. Um, it's it's aggravating and infuriating to me for a number of reasons, mm -hmm. but above all, it just goes against the, the whole idea of education. Period. Yeah. Like. Little backstory from, from what I've heard on the news and in print, because I read the papers, I read the daily papers and such. Um, there are school systems, school mm -hmm. districts around the country in different states that are banning books. They're pulling them off the shelves. Um, and <laughs> if I had to give you five seconds to guess which kind of books are being banned... <laughs> I, I'm not even going to give you five. I'll spot you two seconds. I'll give you three seconds to take a wild stab about what kind of books. It's all books on race and culture and LGBTQ issues religion. and religion and gender issues. A and the rationale that I've been hearing of why they're being pulled is that people don't want first of all, don't want their kids to be exposed to this kind of stuff. I'm using scare quotes. <laughs> they won't be, want their kids to be exposed. To the, that's a whole other, that could be a whole other topic for us to like yeah. people hiding behind their kids when it's really just them. Yeah. That's uncomfortable. Okay. They don't want to expose their kids and they don't want to make their kids uncomfortable because we're, we're uncomfortable. Why make our kids uncomfortable about all this stuff? So that's that's what I wanted to kind of get off my chest this week, and and I think there's something there we can kind of pick through. Yeah. Do you feel any better? Or are you still just <laughs> bubbling? A little. I'm I'm bubbling, but I feel better knowing that we can kind get of like out. talk through talk it and get through it out. It. Yeah. 
Do you want to lay on the couch with your feet up I, during this I one? I do, but <laughs> I'm worried my feet stink, so I'm going to keep them down where nobody can see them. Uh, so what, I, have you heard of this? Have you been? I heard of s similar things. The books I have not, and I feel a little uh, ignorant that I haven't, but I have been limiting my um, news Intake. Yeah, intake quite a bit lately. Probably a little too much. Well, um, it is a he it is healthy to unplug from the news cycle. Yes. Yeah. So, but I think that as soon as you started talking about it, I was like, oh my god, what? Yeah. Yes, we need to talk about this. Yeah, and it, it's. I mean, I uh, there's so it's like a minefield. As soon as I as soon as I it, I stepped into this, I'm like, oh, there's going to be a lot of places I don't want to put my foot down, especially in my mouth. Right. So I yeah, want to be very okay. careful about what we, what we're, what I'm saying. But I mean, honestly, it is usually white parents who are saying like, I don't want to expose my kids to LGBTQ stuff or yeah. race stuff or, you know, gender stuff. And I'm like, where else are your kids going to learn all this stuff? And how do you think keeping a book from them is going to keep them away from all of this. Look I mean, at, look yeah. at our country. Look, look at, so you don't want a book on LGBTQ or trans people, but yet they are everywhere in our world and your children are going to have <laughs> like, right. I don't, I, I, how do you avoid this stuff? The, the, and how is avoiding it helping our children? It's not. Well, and also, Kids are very open and accepting. Mm -hmm. Bigotry and hatred are learned. Yep. They are not inherent. People are not born saying, I hate trans people. Right. That's not something I can tell you with 100% accuracy. Yeah. Nobody is born like that. Kids are very curious. They want to learn. They want to ask questions. They want to be exposed to different ways of thinking and different people who have different ideas yeah. and grew up different and different cultures and traditions. That's how people learn and grow. Yes. Kids are very open to this stuff. And they they don't know. They don't assign good or bad yeah. to anything. No. It just is. It's just a new thing to learn and loop a new person to me, you know? So you're not really protecting your kids from anything all you're doing is is stunting their growth emotionally uh um intellectually socially, socially mm -hmm. by keeping information from them and you know reverse psychology the thing that you say they can't do mm -hmm. guess what they're going to want to do it a hundred times more yes. Because you said you can't. Do it. We've all been kids. We've all been there when, when your parents are like, don't go in that cabinet. The cookies are in there. You're not allowed to go in there. And, and, and then guess what we want to do when everybody's away? We want to go and get in the cabinet mm -hmm. and eat the cookies. Yep. Yeah. Not only that, but just the mere statement to your children, I don't want you reading this book or I don't want you reading books about X right. is telling them there's something wrong with X. Right. Without even doing anything else. Right. That there's something wrong with that because mommy and daddy are saying I shouldn't read that or mm -hmm. I shouldn't be exposed to that, that it's bad for me. Right. That in and of itself saying no more is telling them that uh, understanding and knowing about racism and, and the Holocaust and all the examples you, you yeah. LGBTQ oh, yeah, the Holocaust. is bad and it's bad for you. And so... Um, that's where you're just you're just laying the, the groundwork there right for for teaching them there's something wrong with it something bad about it yeah okay. and the I'm glad you said the Holocaust I, I totally forgot about that specific one is one like they there's a lot of school districts that are banning a graphic novel called Mouse that was won a Pulitzer it's the first graphic novel to win a Pulitzer. And it's about the Holocaust told from the point of view of, you know, the 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 author's parent, grandparents or parents. Um, he's like a descendant of. Mm -hmm. And it tells their family story. And it was banned. <laughs> oh, boy. It was I... banned because there's there's nudity. And again, I'm using scare quotes with my fingers. There's there's nudity in it. It's a graphic novel. OK, and it's called Mouse because the Jewish people in the novel are mice and the Nazis are cats. 
So the nudity that people are complaining about is one panel of a cartoon mouse, female mouse. Okay. okay? I'm just I'm just putting that out there. And there's like curse words in it. I I go back to what I said to you before. How do you teach history if you cannot talk about if 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 you cannot have books on the Holocaust, just as an example. How right. do you teach history? You can't. How do you teach current events? How do you teach kids about the world today if they can't read about any of these things we're talking about? Right. You, you can't. Or you can't, or they want to teach both sides. Well, there's both sides. There's two sides to every story. Actually, you know what? There's not. No. There's not. There's... there There's... There's the terrible things that happened and the terrible people that did the terrible things. Yeah. And then there's the people that the terrible things were done to. Mm -hmm. That's history. Like, you you can't two sides the Holocaust. You know, like, well, there were, you know, let's see things from the Nazi point of view. Yeah, you can't, you mm -hmm. can't do that. And because then what happened, there's these false equivalencies everywhere of like, Oh, there's two sides to every story. We gotta, we gotta hear the other, the other side too, and we can't just assume stuff. There's no assuming anything. That's like saying there's two sides to 9/11. Right. <laughs> right. It's like, well, we have to be understanding, and you know, we have right. to hear. No, stop doing it. It's it's bad to do that. And I I understand this is a show about conversation and like asking questions and hearing both sides of things, but sometimes. That gets taken to a really ugly extreme. Yeah. Where and it's really used just to obfuscate the truth and not open up discussion for the truth. You know, mm -hmm. there's a way to analyze events from an objective point of view where you can like get the full picture of it without saying, well, no, now we got to hear from this person. And, and usually that person is just spreading lies about stuff. Like the like the COVID, you know? Oh, there's two sides to COVID. Yeah, the people who don't wear masks and don't get okay. vaccinated, we want to hear their sides. There's not two sides. No, I agree. I'm so I don't think there's two I, sides either. Yeah. Oh, some of you might disagree with us. Some of you might disagree. That's our stance over here. That's that is what conversation is, and that's you know we're allowed to disagree with each other. Yeah. Oh boy, I need to, one second. I have to plug in. People that are watching on YouTube are going to see some stuff. <laughs> I have to plug in my laptop. Oh, Ralph, technical yeah. difficulties. Technical Time out. Difficulties. Time out. I didn't realize it was almost out of use. I don't want anything to go off while I'm, while I'm going off. <laughs> I'm manning the uh, audience here. <clears throat> okay, go. Sorry, everybody. Sorry, YouTube. If you just if you're just hearing this on uh, the podcast, that whole thing, you won't know anything ever happened. No, nope. we're we fine. We could be talking about anything, right? Who knows? But I think it just would it would also affect our teachers. Oh, they're losing their minds. I I, I, I would not be able to be a teacher anymore, no, especially a history mind. teacher. I mean, I, it, and then the kids are going to come up with these questions that are going to make total sense that. The, they're not going to know how to answer or not be allowed to discuss. And how confusing is that to the kids? That's the other thing. It's confusing. It's not just wrong, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. It's confusing to the kids who are seeing these different things or have friends that have gay parents or whatever the case may be. And then they're getting this message that that's not a good thing and that you shouldn't know about that. And that's bad. Right. And it's also easier to discriminate against people when you when you keep large swaths of our history uh, hidden. Yeah, you Just know like, you can't like women's rights right now. They are you know the Supreme Court is ready to overturn a law that has been in effect for over 50, around fifty years. I think 50, 49 ish fifty years that people. In the United States, women have grown up, were born and grown up and gotten old in a country where reproductive health was safe and legal mm -hmm. and effective. And now that's in danger of going away. Yeah. And not being able to teach people about that, the history that is, 
is dangerous because then it allows those laws to go away. Right. I, is this due to pressure? Do you know? Like, is this due? To, this is pressure from the parents on the school district. Mm -hmm. And it it all came about with like critical race theory. This is something that uh, I can't. Let me get my words straight. People are worried about grade schools and high schools teaching critical race theory to their kids, which doesn't happen. It's never happened. It never will happen. It's a college level examination of race in the United States. And it's like a legal, I think my limited knowledge of it is it's like a legal principle or something that's taught in, okay. in college. It's like a university level thing. <laughs> but it's been co-opted and like, we don't want to teach our kids critical race theory. It makes the white kids feel bad. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? It, it doesn't make anybody, you know what? History is uncomfortable. History is going to be uncomfortable. And, but that's the, that's the beauty of it. You, if you don't know your history, you're bound to repeat it. History is uncomfortable. It's not all like wine and roses. Bad things happen in history. But the more we learn about it, the more we remember it, and then it doesn't happen again. I mean, <clears throat> yes. I mean, I think that's so many people recognize that over the past few years. And like, where finally there's discussion about white privilege more than there's ever been. And people are, and, and it, it has been uncomfortable for some people, but needed to be uncomfortable, needed to understand what was going on and see it through a different lens. And more people have now, which is a good start. It's a long mm -hmm. way to go, but it's a good start. So it's like, how can you understand different groups if maybe you don't understand some of the terrible stuff that happened? How can you be better too as a person mm -hmm. by understanding people and having respect for differences and yeah, I don't even know how you begin to do that without knowing. Yeah. And I, I get the parents want to protect their children. I get yeah, that. And I get that parents want to have some kind of say in what their children learn. I get that. I'm not discounting the parents feelings or point of view at all, but what I'm, my point of view is, and I think, our point of view, I don't yeah, want to speak for you, no, but it's... the point of view of the show is you need to hear all the information. If you if you have something that's forbidden to you, knowledge-wise or conversation-wise, you can't have a full conversation. You don't learn anything yeah. if you have bits and pieces or whole big chunks of the story that you're forbidden to talk about because it just it doesn't make sense. Mm -mm. And then, and then everything you, you have this really disjointed conversation about stuff where you don't have all the facts and you, you're not allowed to know all the facts. And then people aren't allowed to talk about stuff. And then you kind of lose good conversations and good communication with other people is a muscle like anything else. And if you start to cut out bits and pieces of, of it, you start to lose, the muscle starts to wither. And you're not protecting your kids. In fact, you're doing them a disservice because you're not preparing them for going out into the world. Can you speak to, uh, from your, your therapist point of view about what that does to somebody as they mature if, if they have all this stuff that's kind of kept from them knowledge-wise and like learning-wise? Well, I think... Um, I, I, I might have to let that process. But what I was going to say earlier was the thing when we were talking about earlier with children being exposed to, to some of these groups of people, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and maybe being friends with, like I said, the, one of their friends at school who has gay parents was the example I right. used. <clears throat> and they may love their, parent, their friend's parents and, and then they're getting this message from their own parents and from the school. And then that makes it very confusing, number one, and it sort of lends itself to what we were just talking about last week, uh, where it's like, well, I see that it's this way and you're telling me it's this way. Like, I, I feel like these are good people and I like them, but you're telling me that's wrong and bad, which can actually affect children's ability to trust their instincts and trust themselves. Mm. Because what they're experiencing with them going with this example with their friend's parents and enjoying being around them and the kind of people they are 
is being, um, what's the word, is being challenged and told that that's bad by their parents who they, when you're a little, look, you look at them as knowing, all, all knowing, everything they tell you is right, that's how you should do it. Mm -hmm. So it can really affect a child's ability to trust themselves, um, number one. You asked me the other piece where they go out into the world. Um, I don't know how that would affect them developing. It really would depend on, on what their path was. If they're going to stay in the same area that's, if they're around like-minded people, then they're going to continue and, and it might not be, they may not have any exposure mm -hmm. uh, and they may just latch right into everything they were told by their parents and, and move on that way. I think if they, if in most circumstances, I don't, I think it's, it's hard to avoid receiving information at the very least that contradicts that thinking. Right. Yeah. Um, and then I think it can make them either, uh, just ill prepared to deal with people who are different from them, afraid maybe mm -hmm. of, 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 of interacting or, or, or knowing, um, uh, very limited in who they can connect with. And, and, and like they would, I feel like this group would be small wherever mm -hmm. they would go. And that for the most part, it might be very, very difficult for them to integrate. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. And it really so depends where they live, where they, move on as adults to who they surround themselves with. Mm -hmm. But if you took somebody from one of these families and placed them in a, in a very large university with all sorts of diversity, how are they going to function in that? And that's, that's, I think one of the benefits of going to a higher education place like a university or college because that's the first time I think where people are away from their parents, away mm -hmm. from their families and do get exposed to different people, different cultures, different points yeah. of view. Um, so you don't know, you do not have to go to college, but for some people that's their first step into the real world where they get to be exposed to all this stuff and don't really have that veil of secrecy that's over stuff. <clears throat> and Speaking just from my point of view, and I, I've I've had this conversation with a couple people. Um, growing up LGBTQ, we really don't have a lot of resources available to us. We don't have a lot of examples yeah. of yeah. elders in the community that we can talk to, books that we can read, shows that we can watch. So I'm I'm you know we we're talking about Euphoria before, but I'm really kind of envious of kids growing up today because they do have a lot of these shows and mm -hmm. books and magazines and podcasts and music that does cover a ton of area yeah. and like different genders and sexualities and nothing I would have never dreamed about all this when I was growing up and you just speaking from my experience I think Gen X which I am grew up stunted growth wise because there's a lot of guys and and women out there and, you know, whatever, whatever gender the case may be, where we don't know how to function properly. Mm -hmm. We don't know how to date. We don't know how to be in a long-term relationship. We don't know how to, to, to do all these simple things that everybody's like, what are you talking about? I learned how to do that in grade school. Like I had, I had a boyfriend in grade school. I had a right. girlfriend in grade school. Right. Great for you. <laughs> I didn't. I mean, I did, but I was like, because I had to, like, I didn't yeah. know how to make everything line up in my own sense of self mm -hmm. because I didn't have all those resources. So you, I mean, I did the best with what I got and I think I'm doing okay now, but it took me 46 years to get here. And it, it's, you know, you're no matter what the case is, gender, sexuality, race, culture, anything like that, you know, the Holocaust, the, the atrocities that happen, no matter what the case is, Learning your history and knowing there's other people out there, there's resources out there, there's people to talk to and learn from, it helps you grow as a full human being mm -hmm. into the world. Right, like you know? being able to see and understand people that are like you that right. you didn't see. Right. And then as a result, which you touched on last time, you know, feeling like you had to hide who you were. Right. And the whole comedy piece that we mentioned. Right, listen yes. To, listen to last week. Listen to last week. Um, and yeah, and then the shame, perhaps the mm. not being able to fit in the um, secrecy, 
stuff like I agree that that now since there's more out there and more resources and more books and more of everything you said mm -hmm. um that it makes sense to me that that would make some of that stuff a little bit easier I'm not gonna go out and say it's oh it's so easy but <laughs> they're, they're like, especially as a white cisgender woman right but, um but that there's just there's 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 more opportunity for it, more information out there, more people, more resources, if you were just right. saying. And I mean, but let's talk about gender for a second. I mean, women's studies mm -hmm. is, is vital. You know, there's this whole fight of, you know, gender equality and reproductive health goes hand in hand with that. And grow, I, I mean, I can't speak for anybody who is, you know, who identifies as a female, but you know, growing up with all that information and books you can read, people you can talk to, it like it makes it makes your your existence as a woman it makes it all kind of make more sense, mm -hmm. I would think. You mm -hmm. know, and if you're cut off from that, things happen where the Supreme Court says, "Guess what? You don't have as many rights as you think you do." And I, I'm in I'm in danger of that too. There, of course, they're going to go after uh, marriage equality. Of course, there are people already talking about it. Oh, we should get rid of that too. Mm. It makes me think of Handmaid's Tale. I get like, yeah. freaked out. <laughs> Absolutely. We're there. Like, you, oh, Handmaid's Tale is a great fiction story. Not anymore. No, that was like a horror show to me. Yeah. Like, I could watch, uh, like, any horror movie before that show. Um, well, and then there's just the basic piece of education. So if you grow up in one of these school districts where all this is restricted, and mm -hmm. then you do go on to um, college or some type of higher learning, <laughs> You're going to be way in the dark. Like, you're going to be mm -hmm. way behind. You're going to have major chunks that are going to be, I would think, pretty critical. Just not there for mm -hmm. you. You're, you're not. Like, to me, if you are a parent that feels this strong about this, you, then homeschool your children. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't agree with it either which way. Homeschool in a bus, wherever you're doing it, but or not doing it. But I just, I just think that making it a whole thing for the entire school. I don't know. My kid would be pulled out of there so fast. It would be funny, but I, and I, again, I want to see it from the parent's point of view too. Like, again, I get it. I'd love for a parent in one of these districts to email us. Love to, I would love yeah, to hear that I because I don't, to... we can't seem to wrap our head around what the pr other perspective is because that's not stuff that trauma traumatizes children. <laughs> I, it's and also, difficult, uh, yeah, but it's stuff that can be processed at an age-appropriate level. Yeah. And, I mean, not for nothing, but if you're a Christian and you, you think, like, oh, the only, the only book I want my kids to read is the Bible. Great. Awesome. You know, not, not judging that. But the Bible, I grew up Catholic. I read the Bible. I had to take tests on it. There are some pretty freaking crazy stories in the bible about like drugs and incest and rape yeah. and murder and yeah. and the end of the world and like there's a lot of stuff in there that people if it was in any other book they'd be like no get that off the shelf i, I don't want right. to i don't want to expose my chill children to that but it's uh, uh, what am i lost for words <laughs> i hear, hear you it's it's a lot to process and <sighs> You know, we're obviously coming from a very strong opinion on this one, pretty one sided because we don't just can't get it. Right. And like you were, I know I'm repeating myself here, but you were saying that I understand the parents want to protect their children. Well, this is not protecting your children. Yeah. This is, I, this is my area of profession and it's, that's not protecting children. Looking at it from a child development parenting perspective. Uh, and I know these, I know the, I know there's an aspect of it that's just like, it's a hard conversation to have with my kid and I don't want to have it. Yes. Agree a hundred percent. There are those, those, uh, conversations that we don't want to have with our kids because it's really uncomfortable and weird and icky. I get it. I mean, I don't have kids, but I get it. But I think that's part and parcel of the whole like parent thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's having those hard conversations and, I mean, speaking for me, if I had a kid, I would want them to grow up with as much information as they needed. Mm -hmm. Like, I would want them to ask questions. I would want them to stay curious and learn new things. Because 
I want them to grow up to be amazing. Yeah. You know? And I mean, what would you tell if you had parents that were your, your clients who were going through this and like wanted to protect their kids and didn't want to have the hard conversations? Like what would... I would explore their own stuff with that. Ooh, right? <laughs> yeah, because that's what that's about, is is their own discomfort. Where does that come from? And and try to piece that, <clears throat> excuse me, together. And then <clears throat> if they're able to see that, recognize that, maybe they would then have a different approach or thought process on on the way they were parenting their children. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, that would be the only way I would know how to go about it because they're, they're talking about their kids and what their kids need, but that's, that's not what kids need. If you just look at, again, I'm not a parent, but if you just you know ch basic child development, mm -hmm. children need to understand, children need to be taught, children need to, they're going to have the, they're going to have these questions and have these experiences even if you try to keep them from like most likely unless you live in like a, a, a what do you call those places um a compound oh yeah <laughs> Pick a word um that's what i would do i would go right to the parents and about the parents rather than like trying to go about and and if they weren't ready to go there then there wasn't going to be any room for change if they weren't willing to try to approach it differently with their children, then there would really kind of be no no area for growth there. You know, not from what I, the way I do yeah. my work. No, yeah, no, I, I hear you. And also, I think I have a hard time making connection in my brain between literature like children's books children's tv shows like peppa pig and like teletubbies and all that stuff where it's it really it preaches tolerance and inclusion and respect and love and curiosity mm -hmm. you know all these books you're like ask questions be curious who's that let's learn about that right. person let's do this stuff where is the line where does the line form in the sand where it's like Yes, be curious, be open, be, you know, ask people questions. Oh, talk to your neighbor, look at that dog, you know, all this. <laughs> look at that dog. Look at, <laughs> that's one of my favorites. Look at that dog. It's a book, look it up. Um, where does that end? Where does it, where is it like, okay, now it's not acceptable to mm -hmm. do that? I don't know the answer. I'm just curious where that distinction happens, where we cross over into the dark lands or the dark world, you know? But also, I was thinking about the fact that, you know, there were a lot of people that, I, I don't know, that, that were talking about the fairy tales and how they um, are scary mm -hmm. sometimes. Some of these yeah. fairy tales are very, very scary. Yeah. And it could be looked at as traumatizing to children also, as well as sending some terrible messages, in particular with women. Yes. Um, so it's, it's like... I don't know why I brought that up, but I just felt like it was along the same lines of people. There was a big group wanting to ban them at some point, banning yeah. these these fairy tales being so accessible to children. And this this is kind of like again, we could start banning everything if we start going down these routes. Of course, it's about like we've been saying over and over again, it's about a conversation. It's about explaining it, talking about it with your kids, right? Not just reading it or not reading it, but talking about it and what right. it means and like. You know, I don't know. Like some of the messages that are that are sent that are sent about women in particular, and some of the old school fairy tales. Like, should you not allow your children to know these stories? That's up to you. But I think it's actually a really good opportunity to talk to them about how it's different now. How back then it was this way, or whatever the case may be. But now today it's this way, and now today the, the movies they're making for kids and shows are so much more advanced, and they're, they're like women are like kicking ass and everything else. Thank God. Am I allowed to say kicking ass? Or is you that can say ki ass is fine. <laughs> ass is fine. Ass is fine. Yeah. No, I think ass. It's it's fine. We just said it like twenty times. All right, it? ass. Um, ass. Uh, but <laughs> oh. along the same line of things being scary i think that's a great tie into what we've been talking about because if you do not teach about other cultures other genders other sexuality other you know religion other anything they stay other yeah 
And then when people get older and they go out into the world, high school's over, you're now in the real world, you go to college or whatever, go get a job or, you know, start your life. Then you see, you run into these people. You run into somebody who is, doesn't share your religious beliefs, who is of a different race, of a different sexuality, you know, they do not register as real people. No, they're like from another planet. Right. And it's easier then to discriminate against them because you have not been taught these are people. Mm -hmm. They have been this, these abstract others that don't exist in the real world. So then when you meet one, it's like, it's easy for me to hate you because you're not real to me. Right. You know? Sad. It is sad. So there's so much danger in, in this. And I think, I think my, my anger of this, and I feel better. I do feel okay, better. Okay, good. All okay, right. yeah, we I feel much better. We might have to better. do a deep breath gonna, at the end. I know, I we're like... going to have to do some breathing exercises after this. A little, little, uh, a little, Roku, what is it? With the hot stones? Reiki? Reiki. Reiki. Roku. Isn't Roku that, is a, um... a TV app. <laughs> it's like a fire oh, like, I think that's on my fire <laughs> Warm stone fire. We're warm stick. stone Reiki, yes. <laughs> oh man, you can tell how much I get that done. Um, it, it, well, I think what bugs me the most about it is that it's detrimental to everybody, mm -hmm. but especially to the person you're keeping the knowledge from. No, no, at no time anywhere in the history of anything has keeping keeping knowledge and facts and history from somebody did them any favors. And I, the, the more we can share information and talk and, and share ideas and ask questions and not get offended and like, I, you know, I, I don't want, I don't want to feel bad about this. So I'm not going to talk too bad. That's, you know, sometimes yeah. conversations are difficult and you're going to feel bad, but it's, that means it's working. And discomfort means change, means yeah. growth. Yes. Growth. That's a better word. Growth is I say it all the time to my clients. I'm like, if you're uncomfortable when you try to do X thing, that's that's good. Yeah. Because you, if you were comfortable, you're not doing something different. Amen. And you're you're growing, and you're yeah. I mean, I don't want to keep saying the same thing over and over again. Well, sometimes it's necessary to <laughs> to say beat the dead horse. Yes. Yeah, but yeah, just I think if there's one thing to take away from this conversation today, it's like be. Yes, conversations are not always going to be happy-go-lucky. Mm -hmm. There's going to be difficult ones, but yeah. that that's good. If it's a difficult conversation, that means there's something there that the universe is telling mm -hmm. you you need to, to consider this to grow as a person. Yep. And banning books is not the way to do it. No. I Please. can't believe we're talking about I banning books it. it's in 2022. 20, it's 2022 really, really that we're talking about banning books. So the people aren't comfortable. Oh, like, boy. Literally, it's all Luke. I don't know if we're going to get angry emails or what's going to happen from this episode. I'm fine. I'm I fine really with that. I'm fine with it, too. And I'm fine I, with that. But I would, we would love to hear from either side anything on this, and, this piece. But You know, I, I would be happy to have somebody on as a guest. If, oh, absolutely. If somebody wanted to, to explore the other side, not in an angry way. No, we but aren't a, fighters. We aren't fighters. We're lovers. We, we want to learn we anyway. Learn. We want to learn and explore. But it's, I say angry, but I'm just more like surprised and shocked and disheartened and saddened yeah. by the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So it, it comes out as anger, but it's just like, what are we doing? Yeah. You know, this backwards. is, this is weird. So yes, if you, if you have a strongly worded email, you want to shoot to us. We love it. We love it. Send it along. Uh, we're we're not hiding. We're everywhere. We're on all the social medias. But yes. it's just I, we we want people to have conversations. We don't want to hide information from anybody. So mm -hmm. that's that's the big thing. I don't know. What do you think? Ralph is feeling so much better. I feel the so rest much better. Day. I think he can breathe more freely. I can. I'm gonna. And. <laughs> no, I think it was really an important thing to talk about, and I'm glad we did cover it today. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm glad we we could we could explore it because I know there's people out there who feel the same way, and we there's people in other countries that listen to us who may be listening to this and going, "What is right. going on over there?" I don't there? know what every, every. I always they always think it can't get worse, and then we hear more crazy stuff. They're all like, "United States, are you okay?" <laughs> 
Do you need a hug? Right, right. We do. We do. We the U, the U.S. needs a hug. A big big hug from all the rest of yes, the world. Yes, agreed. Oh boy. All right. Um, I'm gonna go read a book. <laughs> And you're especially going to pick one that might be banned in school. I am going to pick a book that's been banned and read it mm -hmm. on my front porch. Yep. With a flashlight. So out loud. Say, out loud. To the children that can't read, read it Read to the children of the neighborhood. <laughs> Can you imagine? That would be creepy. That would be, that would be a little creepy. I don't think I'm going to do that. Uh, all right, friends. Thank you for listening. Thank you. And we'll, we'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Oh, man. Was that too much? No. Okay. I don't care. I feel very strong <laughs> about it. And if anyone disagreed, I'd be like, okay, well, I, this is my, our belief and value system. And that's all we share. Here. Yeah. You know if what? If you don't agree, that's okay. You know what? Yeah. There's other, what we're, there's other podcasts out there who I'm sure we have a bizarro podcast out there. That's, a, you know, the exact opposite of us. Like, Hey, don't ask me any questions. <laughs> hey, don't ask me something. This is, this is the way we feel. Too yeah. bad. Don't, yeah, don't. Don't ask a question. Yeah, it's... We're always just so quick to want to put someone in a box or judge. And, like, I don't know. I say this to people all the time. I'm like, and I'm not... I try to do this. It's just, like, take a step back first and say, why? Let yeah. me under... I don't understand that. Like, let me find out more by asking that person questions or right. reading about it or whatever the case may be. But instead, people are so threatened. You know, they want to be like, that's weird and ew and blah, you know, and like criticize and judge. That's and that judging. just like shuts the growth process down and often makes people feel crappy. Yeah. Too judgy, too, ju too much judgment, uh, too many people quick to feel offended yeah. about stuff. Yep. The snowflake thing cracks me up all the time. Oh, the snowflake. You're such a snowflake about the book thing. I'm not the one banning books. I'll be a snowflake all day. I'll, I would absolutely be a snowflake all day because yeah. I want people to learn and grow and be full, fully formed, you know, members of society. And I just want people to be like, I want people to have all the opportunities open to them that they can. And not having all the information growing up and ha not having that full education is detrimental to that, yep. to that kid. Yep. And I, and I don't want that. I want kids to have, I want kids to be able to ask questions and get answers to them and not feel like, yeah, like feel yeah. offended or, or, or like icky, like, oh, I can't ask that question. It's weird. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. there are no weird questions. No weird, no dumb. No weird, no dumb. All right. Okay, we both have to take a nap now. Yeah. All right, you two. <laughs> we worked this hard. This has been fun. Thanks all. And honestly, if if somebody does disagree with us strongly, leave us a co let, do well, leave us a nice comment because if it's gross, I'll just delete it. But you know, send us an email or like if you really do want to have a conversation about this, get in touch. We're happy to have it. But yeah. you know, keep them coming. Keep them coming. All right, friends. Thanks.